This is what the three shift registers look like. I cleaned up my breadboard, as you can see. I cleaned up my whole entire breadboard, ready for the new project. And this is all the way it actually looks. And I got my ground, little ground wiring hooked on each side of the negatives. And I'm ready to rock and roll. Right now, these shift registers are not got nothing to do with any daisy chain yet. These are just the power of the negative and positive going through each one, ready to, ready to go once I do it. Now, I am only one person holding this camera, so it's very difficult to try and push the wires in at the same time and, and explain how it goes, but I'll explain each full step after I've put them in. So first we're going to start with daisy chaining these shift registers. And then by the note, by the way, they're 8 bits each. each. They're 8 bits each. So we're going to daisy chain them together in this first step. As you can see here, this is the first step to daisy chain all three shift registers together. As you notice, I got pin 14 going into to the last output here. And then this pin 14 goes to this level, last output on this uh, shift register to daisy chain it. And then this uh, pin 14 goes to this first output right here to the Raspberry Pi. And then the second step, I will set up to where the pins actually go to the, the shift registers to make them active and stuff. So we'll go, we're going to carry on with the next step now. Okay, as you can see, this is the third step of the final thing where we've already put their, the shift registers on the board. We've already powered, we already put the ports together that make uh, the daisy chain part of it run. Now we're into this third step here where we actually got the 11 and 12 pins hooked up to the 11 and 12 pins on each of these registers, daisy chain them to find the come out into these outputs here that you see on the Raspberry Pi. And these here are going to use these three ports only to power 24 LEDs. And But what we're going to do, we're going to be powering this little guy here. We're going to be having some fun with this little eight, uh, metrics, uh, LED metrics uh, thingy, whatever you call it. So we're going to be putting this together, but like I said, I'm only one person with a camera. I will already have this part assembled. And then I'll do the next step where I show the wiring. Okay, and the, uh, you'll see the trans, the resistors and everything hooked up to this little puppy. And we're going to see what it does with the shift registers. Okay, this right now is the pie that's all ready to go. And what I'm, about, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm only going to use two shift registers for this particular thing I'm going to be doing. But I still got them daisy chained. But from Q0 to Q7, which is uh, right here, we're going to use these little tweet tweeters here. Uh, there's little pins on, Q, on the Q0, just right beside this positive pin, will be the very first pin to the... To the, the shift registers but we're going to start with the far right first and we're going to go from Q0 to Q1 all the way down to Q7 the ground doesn't get touched the Q7 stops right here those will be where we put all our fancy little metrics display which is right here and as the label shows when I had it in the other way by accident this little labels they usually come with a tip notch they say but mine in this case didn't and mine was supposed to be white, not red. But in either case, it works the same fashion as they describe as how it works. But how this works is, the very first shift register, this little guy right here, he's the very first one, he will go right here. He will, he will go right here on this side. And then these wires here are joined, ready to go on to the second shift register. The second shift register right here, is where these guys are gonna be coming out of like the other wires, the ports. And uh, this is pretty much how the breadboard power looks like with my cobbler. Like I showed you that I have input instead of having to take the inputs and put them inside the case, I have them right here instead all along. That way it's a lot easier and the pins don't get broken. And the only thing that wears out possibly is the breadboard and I can always get a new one of those, but I can't always get a new pie. But this is how the setup is. And this next step, I will show you where I have, have, have all the other leads that go to the Q0 to Q7 pin outputs. But so far, this is what this looks like. What you see here. 
it doesn't look like much and because it's three volts by the way I'm not using any resistors it's on the three volt side I got this little tiny positive little tiny node wire breadboard piece of wiring right here I got if I'm pointing at it right I got it put, I got it right there it's right there and then I got the negative ground going to here for the outputs on the uh, for the inputs on the shift registers as you can see these little black wires here down here and down here and, and one little tiny one that's going into an L shape right there with the green piece of wire going there they all have that same out that same layout and then uh, pretty soon we're going to be putting the fun all together and these wires here when you get a kit you don't always get the color wires you want but these are pagan wires as, as the ends here these ends here you know these peg into the breadboard like so but these wires i really don't care for all these clown type of carnival wires but this is the best i could do and these are really only the wires i got left suitable for the job because my other breadboard wiring that i like it can't fit in here that good and i'm tired of fighting with it and bending it up this breadboard's such a good breadboard it's even tight on the breadboard wiring that you see over here these little tiny guys right here that's this is called breadboard wiring i wish this would fit in here too good but it it's just too good of a connection but i still can't complain i like the breadboard very much but these are the wires i'm going to be using to hook up to the two shift registers remember i'm not using the third one yet but that will be in another project coming into the same video when we have fun with these little segments here okay we're either gonna have fun with this all right but uh, this here is definitely we're going to have fun with and we're going to have fun with this too. But I keep forgetting the name of this thing that I keep telling you guys. I keep forgetting the name. But this is an 8x8 LED metrics. There's 64 LEDs on here. But they can't always, they can't come on totally independent. You need one side that will come on this side here. And then when I have the other wires, they'll have to come on here. So this is... This is, uh, this is side, this is one, two, three, four, all the way to seven or eight. And this continues on. But the numbers they show are not what you would see, you'd think, but the LEDs hook up pretty easy. It looks complicated, but they actually do hook up pretty easy, which you'll see in that next step. But these are the carnival wires I'm using right here. The ugly looking colors. I wish I had only red and black, but I don't. But it's okay. These will have to do. These will just have to do. But this is going to complete my whole project on what I'm going to show you guys here. Okay, this is the all out layout of the pins outputs to these wires. These carnival looking wires here that I described. They're all going to from pin zero to from pin Q0 to pin Q7 on each of these two shift registers. I'd have to normally have uh, as many resistors as I need for uh, two shift registers. So I'd need a, I'd, I would need 16 to 20 ohm resistors, which I don't need because technically I'm using what is called, this is the three volt side here. This is the five volt side. This little tiny breadboard wiring that is right here, right there, that little tiny breadboard wiring it goes all the way down the positive rail, down to here, and then I use the little tiny, negative little tiny guy right here, this little tiny guy, he goes into all these little tiny negative wires here on the shift register, all these little black wires, and right down to the ground wire here that you can't see now because of the pins, which I probably showed you before. But this is what you I expect to see. And here's the fun that's gonna happen. The metrics, surprisingly on the camera, looks like it's all white, but they're really red lights. They're not white at all, they're red. And see the neat little pattern I made out of Python programming? This is what Python is all about. And this is what uh, uh, electronics for the breadboard is all about with programming. You can, you can do some wonderful patterns and wonderful designs. Some work is tedious, but other than that though, the finished products are always rewarding, especially when you end up getting it right out of something so complicated. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. And if you put your mind to something good enough, you end up doing beautiful stuff like this. This is an LED. It's got 10 LEDs on it individually, 
here actually individually these things work which is beautiful this is going to take uh two shift registers there's 10 bits on here so there's gonna it's gonna take the other shift register but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some other blue level leds on here and just uh what i was gonna do i was gonna add some colored leds that do different colors but the more leds that look like they're chasing the better they do so we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this and the pins though i uh i just didn't show it here but i did show it earlier but i didn't tell you how many pins there were there's 10 pins on each side of this and this down here is a divisor there's no power going through here that's why i have all these lights and chips looking like this here i forgot to mention that since i'm making a good tutorial out of here it's always time to, to mention stuff like this but one's for negative and one's for positive and this acts like a bridge between this side and this side so as you go we're gonna see how this looks when it's already hooked up i'm gonna need resistors for this i'm gonna need resistors for all my leads so i'm gonna need 24 resistors 220 ohm each 220 ohm each resistors which again are these guys right here uh, let's see if i can grab one without teetering around all over the place but this is the guy right here that's the sharp red bands that lets you know and there's a little gold on a little gold piece on on the end of that but i guess you can hardly see it with my gopro but these are 220 ohm resistors i'm going to need 24 of these so now we're going to do the next step of hooking it up just like before and i'll show you the after effect So far, just to show you guys, this is just one shift register hooked up so far. We got we got seven LEDs right here, and we got one that's actually hooked up to this power bar right here, this uh, LED, LED bar right here. So there's actually one little green cord hooked up to this guy right here, so far. And then it all starts from, from uh, Q0 all the way to Q7 this way. That's how it's going, okay? Q0, back here to Q1 to Q7. But they're going this way. I got the wires going this way. Okay, you can have any way you want, but I got them going to the way the human eye reads numbers. And that's how it's going so far, and I'll show you the second register all hooked up. Now, we have shift register two all hooked up. From its pin zero uh, to, to, from its pin Q0 to pin Q7. The same kind of fashion and it starts along here from this last green wire to these white ones here that's where the second shift register is actually starting off and we have all the pins all hooked up we believe yep, now we're going to be working on our third third uh, shift register to hook that up to the to these lights here to the rest of them plus there's one left over remember there's ten and there's seven and seven Finally, we have the third shift version hooked up. This is the way the other ones are. They all start at Q0 and through Q7. So I got them all going from right to left. Right to left, okay? That's how I got these going. These sets of lights, including a couple of these, go to the first shift register, and then about near the, this part here and onward, go to the second one, and then the third shift register. Remember, there's 10, there's 10, in, leds in the LED bar and there's 14 LEDs cell on each side that includes 24 bits all together but this is a fully loaded 24 bit shift register acting as one big one you know there's three of them they're acting as one big one but this is the final setup here and as you can see I forgot to mention those extra red wires that go to those extra little breadboard little wiring uh, core wire they call it I'm not using those right now, but they are a help in case I ever need them. But I always got them there, but they're not actually set or on or anything like that. So that's they're just there doing nothing. But the register ones that I'm using for the three shift registers, those are the only ones that are in power right now. And uh, like I said, that whole side powers the positive and the negative, and this here is powering the negative side, where all the, re the resistors are. I got them acting as whichever I want to go through the power directly through them first, which that's the way I got it. And you can put them in backwards or forwards, it doesn't matter which way you put them in, as long as you got them crossed over, like the way I got it. But they can go upside down or right side up, but I got them all the same order because I'm just fussy that way. 
But here we go. We're gonna find out the final result here, okay? Now, I'm not sure if this light will look okay, but we're gonna take it away for a minute. Okay, we're gonna try and go like that. I wanna see if I can see this good. And this is gonna do the sequence to all the ones and zeros that I had to do in a pattern with strings and stuff. But this, this shift register is mostly used for logic, which you will see the different effects of what I mean. Right now, it's just all choreographed on a list of, list of printed ones and zeros that you do in a pattern yourself. This, and this one's random. As you see here, this is all random. And this is how it shifts. Even in its random bits, it actually goes from right to left. And now you see the binary count. And this binary count, if I let it go, it'll count right up to 24 bits, which makes this be 16,777,260. 216 bits like number uh, the number of the 24 bits that's how high that number is now if I was to let this go for a few days I don't know how many days it would take to count that high with this like this like that just going at this pace and I think it's going at 0.3 uh, a second to how 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 the delay for I don't know how many days it would actually take if I was gonna let this keep going but this is a 24-bit uh, uh, number now, and it's these three shift registers, they all act like one big one now. They all act like one big shift register. Instead of 8 bits or 16 bits, it's now 24 bits. That's a big number. And uh, 16,777,216. But what I have here for, the, for this bit here, I got it saying there's two sets. There's this guy right here, and uh, then there's this one right here. See the see the 215, and then you see the 216 here. Well, what you do is you gotta make that increment to that, and then the next bits down from that, the, the, the 20, bit 23, would be this number here, and then you make it go to this number here. So you do so it takes it involves two for loops. Is what this actually does here when you actually make the code to do binary. And then the choreographed of the ones and zeros, they are here. See that? See how I call the variable list? I call it let show. And then this here, this is led intro, where it shows us the blinking lights at first. And this is led show. That does all the crazy binary pattern. This is what that is. And then the for loops all begin down here. First I turn all the shift register bits to off. So it looks nicer. And then I used an input to just push the return key when I was ready to make the lights work. And then all the fun begins here. See the intro right there? See that? See what I'm, see the variable I'm calling? I'm calling the variable so it'll play all the ones and zeros in here. And then it plays in a loop. I got two, two loops, two separate loops, and another loop down here, and then I got another loop here. Oh boy, where's my one with the binary? I can show you guys that one. Right here. This is where the binary one starts off. This is the binary one. Right here. That's the that's for the first uh, part of the digits that actually do binary. It's the second one down here. And here's where you can see where I got the two's complement. That minus one right there. That triggers the two's complement, so we can keep going. Because computers don't really subtract, they just keep adding. That's all they do. But so far, this is what I've done with the shift register. But this is how you make these little uh, LED uh, me uh, metrics work and stuff. They're a lot easier than you think. Now some mind you, like I said, they got little labels on the front. You have to pay attention to the labels or just try it, because they either go one way or the other way. You, as long as it's the right voltage, you can't electrocute anything. Just don't cross touch wires. That's all you gotta remember. Other than that, you're just playing with a big battery. It's just the difference is, you plug it in, it runs a computer, 220 volts or 110 whatever, and then you got your three volt side and your five volt side, which makes it reduced to act like a battery. So just imagine it's like a battery, but you still gotta be safe with it. But 
Other than that, they're pretty they're pretty good to work with. They're they're they're, they're, they're good to work with as long as you know what you're doing. It's not that hard at all. You just gotta be perseverant and take your time and be patient. And before you know it, you can come up with masterpieces like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on this little guy. We're gonna work on this little guy right here. This little segment, and it's got, I believe it's got uh, five little pegs on each side. So we're gonna see what this does. Uh, I was gonna go for the bigger one right away. I was gonna go for this one, but I haven't worked with these yet, so I'm not really sure what I, what I do with them. But uh, there's a little decimal point right there, as you can see. So that one has a decimal point too. So yeah, we're gonna go for this one first, see how good I can do right here. And uh, so far it's a whole mouthful I gotta learn here. But uh, this is the one here with five pins on each side, I guess. And how it goes, it's probably gonna be the same way with the label. It's gonna probably go that way, the way I got it. But I'm gonna turn this around. I may have wires in, in between, but I hope not. I hope I can actually keep it clean out of the way. So I need to look at it this way, not upside down because of the decimal point. So it's gotta be this way. Okay, so we're gonna have fun. Okay, this is the schematic the kit shows me on how to use our little 8-bit metrics, that uh, our little 8-bit segment thing that we got here. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna make this do, how it's gonna count yet. But as for this layout, I really don't care for the layout too much, it's too confusing. So I just look at the main project itself, like this, for example, here. That little red wire going down to the positive side, that means that's going to be the voltage. Because it's an, it's an anode, 8-bit uh, uh, segment thing. It's an, an it's an anode and the LEDs inside are cathodes. They're negative. That means when I have my shift register set at zero, it'll actually come on. Whatever part, whatever Q0 to Q1 register lights, uh, register bit lights up that will happen so instead of it being zero being off it'll be being zero the signals will come on because it's an anode that's positive and this is my layout here of where i got this as the same thing going in the bottom going to the voltage drill of three volts on this side right here so this little bridge here is going all the way down the three volt rail there so that takes three volts and then when I take this little guy and I touch one of these resistor uh, things, see how I make the segment come on? I, I just haven't got them hooked up yet to the shift registers themselves, but each time I touch one of these resistors here, one of these nearby things, see how it lights up? And then uh, you go on this side. And I'm gonna light this up. See that? And then this will just light up right there, that's the decimal point. This one here appears to be the decimal point. And let's see what this one is. This one's nothing I guess. I'm just looking through the camera at this, but this is another segment here that lights up. Just right beside the decimal, as you can see. And if I'm testing something live, and I got the pie on like you see, it's always good to mean to put the wire in an empty part of the breadboard where you know there's no contacts and it won't hit anything by accident and short something out. So that's how I got this layout right here. So all I gotta do is do some work on this and figure out how to make it programmable and stuff and that's gonna be fun. Okay, this is how I hooked up my wiring so far to the resistors. These eight res tw two 20 ohm resistors. And these yellow leads that are really so far going nowhere right now on the ends they're going to be connected to one shift register. This is going to take only one shift register. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hook all these up. And I'll show you the finished hookup. And then we're going to try some more fun seeing what I can make it do. Okay, this here appears to be the final act in our project. We're all hooked up. I tried it out before I actually wanted to put it on video and make sure I was correct. But as you can see, there is one shift register that, that is running this whole thing. It's only seven segments plus a decimal point, so it makes eight, eight uh, inputs all together 
for the seven segment display. And now this here, this red wire, this is called a common anode segment, seven segment display. I should have mentioned the word common anode. But this here goes all the way to the VCC volt side of the three volt side of the Raspberry Pi. As you can see my little core wiring running down there to go to that rail. Now, we're gonna watch the fun. Are you ready? Let's watch some fun. It's not much, but it's a start. The digits are actually, they're actually red, they're not white. Like all the rest of them are red, they're not white, just the camera here shows white. But I just put it in the while loop, and what I also done here, but it's a little hard to do holding the camera, when you push control C, I set an input, in, a keyboard intro, uh, try and accept handler in there, so I can make it so the bits all turn off. It actually cleans up the GPIO pins too with GPIO.cleanup after that last command. That's the very last command I use. But this here, this will keep on counting all the way to the letters I made. Right now there's really no logic to it, but this so far this is the first step. And now we are really gonna try this thing here. This is intimidating. This is intimidating. I hope I can muster this down just as good as I did this other one and it has a label too on the front of it and it has six pins on each side and I believe this is also an anode this is also a common anode so they say and you can see the diagram that but uh, these are the kind I'm using it's called a common anode okay so this is gonna be a real lot of fun Okay, this is part of the moment we were all waiting for, but it didn't turn out like quite the way I expected. I was hoping I would figure out how to make the digits actually count, but instead I got pins, all the black wires that you see, I got them going from pins 12, 9, 8, and 6. And they go into the Raspberry GPIO ports that I wasn't using. Now I'm using the little tiny breadboard wire in there, that core wire, that one little tiny orange core wire. That's all sitting there in the motion and it still only took one ship register. But this is all I got to do so far. It ain't much. This is all I got to do. It'll count all the way to F and then go to the, turn that segment, that whole set of segments off and count with that one there. And like I said before, it's really a red LED display, but on here it shows white. But all the segments are all individual. Uh, you can turn them on and off individually, but if I was to turn these all on at once, it'd be still the same number. So I don't know how to control the actual sequence of timers and things like that yet. But this is the only way I knew how to hook it up. And this is the way here, the pattern works for the ones and zeros. These are the ones and zeros to all the numbers I made. As you can see, the variable names beside them. And that's how they look, they're, they're, uh, they're eight characters or however many characters I need for the number eight and the decimal point, that'd be all of them, pretty much. And this is the loops down here I use. Now this here, down here, see that number one right there? That means the bits stay off, not on. It's the other way around with these guys because it's a, it's a positive anode. So one is always on, off and zero is always on. So right now the bits are off to make it look more nicer until I push the input key to push the return key to where that input command is right here and then it goes all the way down to this loop here to do all the statements to the numbers and here's my interrupt vector with a try and accept handler that's keyboard interrupt that makes it so when I push control C it cleans up the GPI ports and breaks out of the loop at the same time this great big while loop here you see here I don't have to have that in there but it just makes the thing keep going in forever but this is all I could do so far. Sorry for a bit of a disappointment, but I wanted it to count. But so far, this is how you hook up a four digit seven segment display. And uh, the ports themselves don't need uh, 220 ohm resistors, but the actual lead case, it needs 220 ohm resistors. There's eight of them. That's how it's done. I hope you enjoyed our little show, even though it wasn't much here. But it was a little bit of an intimidation to put it all together. I had to make sure I had it all right and everything. 
and nothing else has really changed. Those rods are being used now to run this. Now all I've got to do is figure out what kind of I'm going to do thing I'm going to do next with the Raspberry Pi. But I'm going to definitely keep working on this, and I'll be able to write a program and show you guys how to do this. Other than that, though, I will conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.